So we've got Matthew Holsall on the phone right now. Hi Matthew, how are you doing? I'm good, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, what you've been up to this month? Um, well, yeah, I've just had uh, my new album came out on the 15th of October. It's called Fletcher Moss Park and it's, it's out on Gondwana Records. So, so that's been the main thing. And you're on the promotional trail for that now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got the forum show coming up with Sean Cootie. Um, I think that's on the 23rd of November. Can you tell me what we can all expect from that show? Um, well, I mean, I'm really looking forward to that. It's probably what a fantastic lineup and a gig, great gig. Um, I'm bringing along my trio, which um, features Luke Flowers on drums from the Cinematic Orchestra. Taz Modi on uh, Fender Rhodes. Um, he's from Submotion Orchestra. He's playing the Fender Rhodes and a, a vintage Moog Rogue synthesizer on the bass. And uh, I'll be playing the trumpet with um, some effects. I, I use space echoes and um, loop pedals and reverb pedals and various other bits in, in my um, uh, setup. And um, yeah, we'll be doing a, a pretty sort of lively kind of um, set with reworkings of my tunes and we, we do covers of Square Pusher and Dayfix Twin tunes as well. The Forum is, I think it's over 2,000 capacity venue, it's a big show. Um, yeah. I mean with that in mind, does that leave, affect the kind of tracks or the, the styles that you, you think you need to play on the night? It's kind of a similar atmosphere, I guess, to a festival. And um, when sure. I play at festivals, I, I tend to use this lineup because if you use the double bass or you know acoustic piano, you do tend to get lost in the in the size of the room, the, the atmosphere. So we're using the big sub bass and um, you know uh, the electric keyboards to give it that extra weight and um, energy. So. So, which it should definitely do. You just mentioned the, the new LP that's out. Um, are there any particular inspirations behind the creation of it? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots of different people. I, I, I'm a DJ as well as a, a composer and a performer, and um, you know, I listen to all types of music from cinematic orchestra to Alice and John Coltrane and Pharaoh Sanders and. Uh, people like Miguel Atwood Ferguson, um, all, all sorts of different people have influenced me um, making that record and there's little elements of it that you'll, you'll pick up if you have a listen from all of them. Could you tell me a little bit about sort of starting out as a trumpeter, are you classically trained? Um, well, I, I started at, at primary school at, at, um, when I was about six years old and um, I just had teachers standard sort of teachers that taught you the obvious stuff and then um, I had uh, various teachers throughout my sort of teens and I had a classical teacher and a jazz trumpet teacher for a while um, but a lot of the stuff that's really helped my playing is the classical sort of stuff to, to make this working on the tone of the instrument try to get it as round and warm as possible um, and then, then obviously the jazz has helped me just be free and expressive on the instrument as well. So. Collaborations, um, obviously you're, you're working with um, Luke and other musicians at the moment. Um, are there any sort of artists you've got in mind possibly for the next album or live guests that you haven't yet collaborated with? Yeah, I mean I'm, I'm working and trying out things with lots of different people um, all over the place. I've been working with a Koto player from London. Um, she's amazing. She's on the next um, acoustic record I'm working on. And then with the trio, we're making a record um, with with uh, Luke on drums and then another drummer called Rob Turner, um, who's this kind of much. He's more sort of Aphex Twin style drumming. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Taz on keys. So we, we're kind of working together on that stuff, and then whilst that's happening, I'm making another spiritual jazz style record as well, which will feature strings. And it possibly, it, it, I'm looking to get some vocalists on some on both projects as well. But um, uh, it just depends how it all pans With out. that in mind, I guess you already know where your music might take you next. Yeah, I mean, there's, I've got loads of stuff that's that's 
bubbling up in, in various directions and um, they'll just come out either under all under my name or under various aliases and stuff mm-hmm. but um, it's yeah I'm, I'm just making whatever I, I feel 100% happy with and I'm not restricting myself to just making one type of record mm-hmm. Can you tell me about the last record you bought? The last record I bought well um, I actually bought the Soul Jazz Orchestra's new album uh, it's, it's great absolutely love it uh, it's kind of Afrobeat um, sort of bits of sort of reggae uh, mm-hmm. vibes in there as well and a bit funky um, and it, it yeah I, I just love it it's, it's kind of loads of tracks on that I, I like playing out when I'm DJing are there any guilty pleasures you want to admit to us on the phone <laughs> um, uh, no I don't think so um, I, I mean uh, you know uh, I listen to all types of music like I really love uh, the stuff of Ace Twin and mm-hmm. you know people like that but you, you know it hasn't quite come through in my music at all but you know stuff that I, I, I yeah, I really like it. So. But um, other than that, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Did you check out the um, the Barbican show, the Apex Remote Walker I've seen, seen a bit online, it looks wicked. I, mean, I saw him when he last came to Manchester, he played at the Warehouse Projects, and um, mm-hmm. it was absolutely brilliant. He's got this visual software with the way, you know, he films the crowd, but then he puts his face all over the <laughs> crowd and sort of mashes it up, and then he was doing the rest of his visuals were like things like the Man City and Man United team with his face on all the football players and all the Coronation Street cast and stuff it was hilarious <laughs> so, yeah. so that was wicked can you give us an artist to look out for in 2013 um, well I mean I've, I've just signed a trio to because I run a record label as well um, uh, Gondwana Records mm-hmm. is my own label and I've signed a trio um, with that drummer Rob Turner's in, in the trio. It's called Go Go Penguin, and their record's coming out in November on the 19th of November. And it's, it's kind of definitely one worth checking out. We'll well. look for that. Um, and with with that in mind, I mean, starting the new label was that something that you wanted to do with regards to you giving yourself more creative freedom, or was it just you had artists that you thought, yeah, I really want to these guys need to be heard so if I do a label then I can release it it, it was a bit of both really I mean I think I think um, Manchester the scene is really really like good at, like there's a real positive buzz around mm-hmm. Manchester at the moment and there's there's a number of clubs that I, I go to and uh, there's Matt and Fred's Jazz Club and there's Band on the Wall mm-hmm. and there's uh, the Roadhouse has some really good eclectic nights on and I just saw a load of really tired people and, and wanted to record some stuff and that was the first stage of it and then it ended up that we you know we were making some records we were happy with so we started putting that stuff out and um, hopefully we're looking to sign quite a lot more um, local artists but it's definitely based around Manchester and possibly a little bit of lead in Leeds and stuff at the moment mm-hmm. uh, that's the type of artists I'm looking to sign so and then, then expand across the UK and Europe signing acts at, at a later date so. With the new album, you're taking that out on the road. The new album the, is a full acoustic um, jazz record with harp, double bass, drums, piano, saxophone, flute, trumpet. So there's quite a lot of us. So we, we're going to do a couple of gigs with that. Uh, sort of from Jan, January onwards, we've got one at Ronnie Scott's and stuff. Um, and then we've got gigs in Belgium and across Europe. But we, I'm also touring heavily with the trio. Um, I've got gigs in. Dublin and London and Manchester with the trio um, so which we'll still be playing tracks off the album but they'll be in a kind of more lively kind of club environment mm-hmm. Have you played at Ronnie Scott's before? Yeah, yeah I've done it um, I did it with the first gig I did there was with Giles Peterson and Nostalgia 77 yep. uh, with Keith and Julie Tippett and that was brilliant Good line up um, Yeah it was a great jazz um, thing and then I, I did a the Ronnie Scott's um, celebration, the birthday celebration. I did a gig down there for that as well. Another sort of Brit jazz thing as well, and uh, uh, that was brilliant. So I've, I've played there, I think, four times now, so in total. But it's been great. I love it there. So. 
Is there anything that you do to make your touring schedule easier for you? What gets you through the tours? Um, I, I guess uh, you just got to make sure it's all really sort of. It, as much as you you know you want to make loads of money out of it, it's better to kind of um, make it comfortable and, and relaxing to get in nice hotels and uh, you know travel in a little bit more sort of luxuriously is definitely sort of something I'd rather spend the money on that than you know take an extra whatever home you know an extra 50 quid or something it's, it's, so we, we just do stuff like that so we're nice and comfortable and relaxed on tour so. that's excellent well we look forward to seeing you on the 23rd with Sean Cootie yeah, yeah. and all those guys um, Matthew thanks so much for your time uh, it's a pleasure thank you